from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back, we're here to wrap up the MIT Chief Data Officer, Officer Information Quality, it's hashtag MIT CDO IQ Conference. You're watching The Cube, I'm Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen is my co-host. This is two days of coverage, we're wrapping up. Uh, this is our analysis of what's going on here. Paul, let me, let me kick it off. When we first started here, we talked about at our open, it was, we, we saw the Chief Data Officer role emerge from the, the back office, the information quality role. Um, when, in 2013, the CDOs that we talked to, when we asked them what was their scope, we heard things like, oh, it's very wide. Um, involves analytics, data science. Some CDOs even said, oh yeah, security is actually part of our purview because mm -hmm. all the cyber data. Um, and so, very, very wide scope. Even in some cases, some of the digital initiatives were sort of be, being claimed. They were, the CDOs were staking their claim. The reality was, the CDO also emerged out of highly regulated industries, financial services, healthcare, government, and it really was this kind of wonky back office role. Yeah. And so that's Driven what it's by become. Compliance. And that's what it's become again. Um, we're seeing that CDOs largely are not involved in a lot of the emerging AI initiatives. Um, that's what we heard sort of anecdotally talking to, to various folks. Uh, at the same time, I feel as though the CDO role has been more fossilized than it was before. We used to ask, is this role going to be around anymore? We had CIOs tell us that the CIO role was, was going to disappear, and so you had the, both ends of the spectrum. But I feel as though that whatever it's called, CDO, data czar, chief analytics officer, head of data you know, analytics and governance, that role is here to stay, at least for, for a fair amount of time. And increasingly, issues of privacy, and governance, and, and at least the periphery of security, are going to be supported by that CDO role. So that's kind of takeaway number one. Let me get your thoughts. I, I think a, there's a maturity process going on mm -hmm. here. And what we saw really in 2016 through 2018 was uh, a, a sort of a celebration of the arrival of, of the CDO. And we're here, you know, we've got, we've, we've got uh, power now, we've got an agenda, and, and that was, I mean, that was a natural uh, uh, outcome of all of this growth and 90% and of organizations putting CDOs in place. I think what you're seeing now is a realization that, oh my God, <laughs> this is a mess. You know, and what I heard this year was a lot less of this sort of crowing about the ascendance of CDOs and more about we've got a big integration problem, a big data cleansing problem, and we've got to get our hands down into the nitty gritty. And when you talk about, as you said, we hadn't hear so much this year about uh, strategic initiatives, about, uh, about artificial intelligence, about getting involved in you know, digital business or customer experience transformation. What we heard this year was about cleaning up data, finding the data that you've got, organizing it, applying metadata to it, just getting it in shape to do something with it. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think it's part of the natural maturation process. Uh, organizations now have to go through to, uh, to the dirty process of cleaning up this data before they can get to the next stage, which is you know, a couple of three years out for most of them. Yeah, the second big theme, of course we heard this uh, from the former you know, head of analytics at GSK on the opening keynote, is the traditional methods have, have failed. The, the, the enterprise data warehouse, and we've actually studied this a lot. Uh, you know, my analogy is I often use snake swallowing a basketball, mm -hmm. having to build cubes. EDW practitioners would always, I uh, used to call it chasing the chips. Intel would come out with a new chip. Oh, we need that because we got to run faster because it's taking us you know, hours and hours, weeks, days to run these analytics. So, so that really was not an agile, it was a rear view mirror looking thing. And, and Sarbanes actually saved the EDW business because reporting <laughs> you know, became part of compliance. Interesting perspective. The, the master data management piece, we've heard you consistently, we heard Mike Stonebreaker, who's obviously a technology visionary, he was right on, it doesn't scale. Um, it, 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 this notion of deduping everything you know, just doesn't work and you know, manually you know, creating rules. It's just, it's just not the right approach. This, we also heard the top-down data, data uh, enterprise data model doesn't work, it's too complicated, can't operationalize it. So what they do, they kick the can to governance. You know, Hadoop was kind of a sidecar there, big data, 
you know, that failed to live up to its promises. And so it's, it's, it's a big question as to whether or not AI will you know, bring that level of automation. We heard from KPMG, certainly uh, Mike Stonebreaker again said, and, and we heard this uh, uh, as well from Andy Palmer, they're using technology to automate and scale that the big, the number one data science problem, which is they spend all their time wrangling data. You know, we'll see if that if that actually lives up to its promise. Well, well, something we did hear today from several of our guests was about the promise of machine learning to automate this data cleanup process. Yep. And as uh, 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 Mark Ramsey kicked off the conference saying that all of these efforts to standardize data have failed in the past, this does look, he then showed how, uh, how uh, uh, GSK had used some of the tools that were represented here w using machine learning to actually clean up the data at GSK. So there is, and I heard today, uh, you know, a lot of optimism from the people we talked to about the capability of Chris, uh, for example, talking about the capability of machine learning to bring some order to solve this scale, scale problem. Because really, or organizing data um, uh, creating enterprise data models is a scale problem, and the only way you can solve that is with, with automation. I think my, Mike Stonebreaker is you know, right on top of that. So there was uh, uh, optimism at this event. There was kind of an ooh, kind of a, a, uh, a dismay at seeing all the data problems they have to clean up, but also promise that tools are on the way that can do that. Yeah, the, the reason I'm an optimist about this role is because data is such a hard problem. And yet, while there is a, that feeling of, wow, this is really a challenge, there's a lot of smart people here who are up for the challenge and, and have the DNA for it. Um, so the role, that whole 360 thing we talked about, the traditional methods you know, kind of failing, and then the third piece I touched on, which is really bringing machine intelligence to the table. We haven't heard that as much at, at this event. It's now front and center. It's just another example of AI injecting itself into virtually every aspect, every corner, of the industry, and again, I often joke, you know, same wine, new bottle. Um, you know, our industry has a habit uh, of doing that. Um, but it's cyclical. But, but it is, but we seem to be making consistent progress but toward And the machine learning, I thought it was interesting, uh, several of our guests spoke to machine learning being applied to the plumbing projects right now to cleaning up data. Those are really self-contained projects. You can manage those, you can, you can determine out, uh, uh, test outcomes, you can vet the quality of the, of the algorithms. It's not like you're putting machine learning out there in front of the customer where it could potentially do some real damage. They're, they're vetting, they're, they're burning in machine learning in an in a environment that they can control. Right, so, so anyway, two solid days here. Um, I think that this, this conference has really grown. When we first started here, it was about 130 people, I think. Right. Uh, and, and now it's 500 registrants uh, uh, this year. I think 600 is the sort of the goal for, for next year, we're moving venues. Uh, the Cube has been covering this you know, all but one year since 2013, I hope to continue to, to do that. Um, Paul, it was great working with you. Um, Always great work with hope you, Hope we, uh, we can do more together. We heard the Vertica's bringing back its conference. You yeah. and I did that together. So we had Colin Mahoney on. We had the Vertica rock stars on, which was fun. Colin Mahoney, Mike Stonebreaker, uh, uh, Andy Palmer, and Chris Lynch all kind of weighed in, which was great to get their perspectives of kind of the days of MPP and how that's evolved, improving on traditional relational database. And, and now, of course, Stonebreaker applying all these you know, MI, same thing with that scale with Chris Lynch. So it's fun to, to watch those guys, all kind of Boston-based, East Coast mm -hmm. folks. Some news, we just saw the news hit, uh, uh, President Trump holding up the Jedi con uh, uh, contract, as, as we've talked about, we've been following that story very closely. Uh, you know, I've got some, some concerns over that. It's, I think it's largely because he doesn't like Bezos. And know, the Washington and, Post. And the Washington <laughs> Post, exactly. Um, you know, here's this, you know, America first. If the, if the Pentagon says they need this to be competitive with China and AI, there's maybe some, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire there. So it's more important to stick it to Jeff Bezos. It's, it's, I, I, that's what it seems like. So we're watching that story very closely. I think it's, I think it's a bad move for the, for the executive branch to be in, involved in those types of decisions. But, um, you know, what do I know? Well, anyway, Paul, awesome working with you guys. Thanks. Andrew, appreciate you flying out. Sal, good job. Alex, Mike. Great team. Already wrapping up. So thank you for watching. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news. YouTube.com slash siliconangle is where we house our playlist. But thecube.net is the, the main site uh, where we have all the events. It'll show you what's coming up next. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff going on straight through the summer 
And then, of course, you know, VMworld is the big kickoff uh, for the fall season. Go to wikibon.com for all the research. We're out. Thanks for watching Dave Vellante. For Paul Gillen, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>